What's going on growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. If you know anything about New Jersey, then you probably know we grow delicious tomatoes. So today, I wanna to share with you some of my best hacks for growing better, earlier tomatoes. Let's go. Good fruit comes from healthy plants with healthy roots. These are tomatoes that I started from seed. I brought you all along for that and along for the progression of them. Now they're ready to go out. They're ready to hit the next stage. I think they're perfect size. They've just hit that accelerated growth. So I can stick them in, they'll continue to grow. If I had started them too early, I might have needed to transplant. As you probably saw, I planted right directly into seed. So all I have to do is plant the seed one time and transplant out once. There's not a lot of movement from pot to pot, which is good. I think that helps the roots a lot. They don't like being transplanted. Nothing really likes being transplanted that much. So I like to reduce the amount of times I do it. And when I do transplant, you know, I add that mycosin stuff in there to make sure I'm taking advantage of it. Let me show you a tomato that I put in just the other day, right here. I put a number of them in. As you can see, I just find areas in the food forest, stick them in, and then they're doing real well so far. If you can and have the opportunity to start your own seed in cups, I encourage you to do that. One of the reasons was, like I said, the variety selection, but also, I claim that my plants, my tomatoes, do better in other people's gardens than any others. Well, any of the big box stores at least. The reason for that is because my plants, they're not drug addicts. The ones at the big box stores, since they're young, they've been fed uh, most likely chemical fertilizer and continued fed that fertilizer, fertilizer, so they're pretty much drug addicts. If they stopped getting that fertilizer, they basically just, you know, they slow down, they could even croak. And when you buy those plants, you transplant them, you put them into your garden, uh, they don't do that well. And you know, that's demoralizing and that, that's like makes you not want to garden sometimes. And that's kind of the reason why I always start extra ones. So I can give them away to other people and put them in their garden and show them what happens when you have good seed and healthy plants that aren't drug addicts. Things that are grown naturally. Well, as naturally as you can. I didn't add any fertilizer or anything in that. I just made sure with timing the time that those are going to need food soon, they're going to be in the ground. So timing is so important when doing anything involving gardening. Before I get into the specific hacks, I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about timing. You may be wondering, how do you develop good timing? For that, you got to go back to what I often talk about on this channel, and that's having a perennial mindset. So even if you're growing an annual garden, you should be thinking perennial, not just the plants. That's not really what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just the whole aspect of it. So for instance, when you're planting this year, write down in a garden journal. Get a garden journal and write it down when you planted everything or just put it in your phone in the notes. This way next year you can reference back. If you think you maybe started too late, next year you can start a week or two earlier. So having that to reference, I think that's your best bet, especially for your specific location. Let's get into the hacks though. I transplanted some of these tomatoes in the food forest just about one or two days ago. And when I did that, that's important because it's nice to do it on a good cloudy day. If you're gonna be transplanting, giving plants a new home, you don't wanna do it on a hot, scorching, dry day. That's just gonna be super stressful for the plants as they adjust to the new homes. So when you do it is important. A nice cloudy day, but if you can't get a cloudy day, like I couldn't get today, then it's good to wait to either the evening or do it in the early morning. I choose to do it in the evening as the sun's starting to set, just about now. This way the plant has all night to kind of adjust to that temperature and then when the sun comes up in the morning, it's had a number of hours to get its feet into its new home. So let me get into that hack that I was talking about though. You probably noticed there as I was walking through the forest, there's just some tomatoes scattered in different locations. How I do that is I come out, do different parts of the day and just look around where I get good pockets of sun, I kind of mark it and then I'll come through and put a tomato later. So I'm gonna stick some of those tomatoes in, show you how to do it and you might have noticed some of those tomatoes, they're not leggy, but they're long. That's just how I want it. That's kind of where the first hack comes in. I found me a nice spot. Now I'm gonna grab a soldaki tomato, which is one of my favorites. And I'm gonna plant three soldakis in three different locations. One in the new food forest, one in the seven-year-old food forest, and one in a different section. We'll see which ones do the best and we'll do the hack for it. I'm gonna stick a tomato right here next to this Honeycrisp apple tree. This is the south side of the tree. So it gets good morning sun and then good setting sun as you can see. I'll just dig a hole. Let's talk tools though, what am I using? I've got a bucket with some black leaf mulch. I'll show you guys what that looks like. I've used that before. I get that for free. It's basically just uh, composted leaves. They have it locally at the recycling center here. Then I'm using Mycos, which is a 
pure mycorrhizal fungi. It's just an inoculant. I put that on the roots because I, uh, I really, really believe a lot in the mycorrhizal association. That's what breaks down a lot of the fungi, uh, the mycose. That's what actually builds soil aggregates, which will actually help your soil, which I'll talk about in the future if you have uh, soil that's uh, clay and gets clogged with water. You need to get the wood chips down. That'll really help you, believe it or not. And uh, I got this little rake. I use that for digging. Uh, scratching back the wood chips I meant, and then we <laughs> got the little shovel I'm going to use. So basic tools. Let me just start by pulling back these wood chips. I say it all the time, but it's so important. We don't plant in wood chips. We plant in the dirt. We plant in the soil. The wood chips are just a mulch. So however deep you have the wood chips, you got to make sure you're digging down into the soil. That's what we're going to do here thing is I'm gonna have to dig a bigger section because tomatoes they're vines so they'll root anywhere you bury the stem which is really nice typically people will bury their tomatoes really deep uh, you know up to here maybe even but what we're gonna do is actually do things a little different we're gonna bury this thing sideways and keep this tip up because tomatoes have a lot of surface roots typically the roots don't go really deep we want a lot of surface roots so we're gonna put that thing sideways let it grow, let it bust out a lot of roots, and I think a lot of roots will meet a lot of fruit. That's what we're going for. So I'm down to the soil here, you can see how deep that was. Because we had issue with weeds here before, we don't want to deal with them again. But a lot of wood chips means a lot of worms, so I couldn't even count how many worms I'm digging through here, and I can see little baby ones. But that's what you want in your, when you're planting your tomatoes. I'm gonna dig initial hole here, I'm gonna keep this native soil. I really want this native soil, I use this a lot. I'm not using that black leaf mulch. I'm not replacing all the soil, I'm just using that more as a top dressing and more as like a little, a little bit of a mixing in at the bottom just to feed the tomato a little bit as it adjusts to its new home. So we're gonna dig out more of a horizontal area. What I want is the tomato to lay like this, kind of angled in, and then we'll bend that top right up and another really important thing about this is that you pick off all the leaves. When you bury a tomato, you don't want any of these leaves on it. If it does, that can cause issues, so you wanna make sure you're picking those leaves off first. You can see this approach is aiming for max roots. This plant, it's tall, but it's not lanky. I made sure it was outside a lot and it had the fan on it often, so it's strong, but I wanted it kinda of tall. This way it can root even more. I'm gonna take all the leaves off, all the ones except the top ones here. I'm just gonna leave the top there and that one, one fan leaf. And we'll just be gentle. When transplanting, you want to make sure you are super gentle. The less you mess with these roots, the better off you are. Some mycos. We'll take a little bit of black leaf mulch. We'll put that on the bottom. Check our depth. I can go a little deeper. That looks good about there. More, even more worms in here. Worms are everywhere. So, stick a little black leaf mulch at the bottom there. A little mycos at the bottom and the roots. Then I'm gonna start with the native soil. And I like this native soil, especially for this because the native soil is sandy where I'm at. Sandy soil will fill in those air pockets when you're transplanting, you want to make sure you don't have any air pockets. That's important. That's why after I, after I fill this soil, I'll make sure I water in and then put another top dressing on top of that. A little more. We'll press it down a little bit, not too hard. Leave the tip of that sticking up, as you can see. And then I'm going to water this in. So I like to water this in before I even put the wood chips down because I want to make sure that it gets fully saturated. And I also want to make sure we fill any air pockets. That's what will happen. This water will settle, settle all the soil, all the sand, and fill up any of those holes. There we go. The water has settled everything, nice and saturated. I'll just put a little more black leaf mulch on top, just for when it rains and we water it in to feed it. And then we'll come back with those wood chips. This is really gonna hold in the moisture and also make it so we don't have any weeds coming up around here. We don't have any competition. Around the base of this, you want to be very gentle. So I'm only gonna put some small wood chips the small, like I said, little ones and just delicate. And that's how we'll leave her. So typically you want about three inches above the soil. 
we have that and we just have the wood chips around it. So we'll let that grow up and it should excel nicely. How is that more of a hack than just planting them vertically though? Well, when you think about it, in my garden and probably yours too, the most fertile, healthy, and best soil is at the top, say three to eight inches. So when I'm planting horizontally like that, I'm having the tomato root in the most fertile soil. Rather than putting it like a foot down deep where I just have sandy soil, I'd rather put it in the fertile stuff. I think that's gonna give me bigger fruit. I'm gonna put some other soldaki, one in the new food forest and one in a different section. Then I'm also gonna plant some of the soldaki vertically. This way we can have more of a control, see which ones do better and just kind of make more of an experiment of it. Now I'm gonna plant another soldaki right next to the one I just planted. That one I planted horizontal, this one I'm gonna plant vertical. Get more of a control, like I mentioned. So we'll just dig these wood chips back like I did before. There's not much of a difference. As you can see here, let me just show you guys some of the soil real quick. This soil here, this should be encouraging because I'll show you some of the soil in the other section. This looks like a really amazing soil, but what I came from, it wasn't this. And the reason that's encouraging for you guys is because you could easily have the soil just by putting in the investments, getting the wood chips down and putting in the right uh, the foundation, the organic matter to allow all the microorganisms and all the soil life to build your soil for you. So I dig this deep and now I've got worms that deep. So it never used to be like that. If I dig in my lawn, that's not happening. Here, I'm gonna put this one nice and deep. We're gonna do the same thing, how we pull off these leaves here. And we're gonna leave about three to four inches above the soil. As I start to get deeper here though, we start to move from my, from my good soil to more of sandy. Even though this sand down here really isn't that bad, but it's moving to more of a sandier soil as opposed to my rich humic, humic acid soil and plenty of life in that stuff. Let's see where we're at. Go a little deeper. And I've got sandy soil, which tomatoes do like because tomatoes don't like sitting in cloggy areas. They like some good drainage. We're gonna be super gentle flipping that. Put some mycos on. Little black leaf mulch. And you can see we have um, there's some spacing around it and then I'll just put the sand in first to fill that gap around it. Let me grab the camera and show you. Now I'm going to take some of this native sandy soil. Actually, I'll take a little more black leaf, uh, a little more mycos, put it around there. Some of this native soil and just put it around the base. Filling in the gaps and we'll layer in some black leaf mulch. More native soil. Push it down a little bit. We're not, we're not being rough with it, but again, we don't want any airspace. Watering is gonna help a lot with that though. You can see we're burying the stem nice and deep. And I'll continue doing a little bit of this layering. And now my native soil is getting a little better now that I'm at the top of it. And I'm gonna water this in. Then I'll put a little more black leaf mulch. So that nice heavy watering soaked in. Put some more mulch on top, black leaf mulch. And then I'll start bringing some small wood chips around the base to help lock in all that moisture. I could have possibly buried a little deeper, but I think that's good. I got a lot of stem buried there and it looks beautiful. Here are some of the tomatoes I transplanted just the other day. Looking really healthy as the sun sets on them. They've adjusted well. Not much transplant shock at all. That has to do with timing, mycos, burying it deep, taking the right steps, I believe. And there's some other ones over there. That one's doing nicely. More over here. I planted about 15 or 20 the other day. We'll get some more in today and keep going along. I love planting because that means harvest is on its way. Let's sum it up though and go over some of the hacks that we went through. I still get to plant about 30 or 40 more tomatoes tonight. I can't wait for that. I'm gonna try to post this video for you too. But what do we go over? The first thing was timing, so important. And keeping a journal, that will help you a lot with your timing. The other thing was planting those stems nice and deep, planting them vertically, getting extra roots. The other one, the, my favorite one, was planting horizontally, where the soil is nice and fertile, using that. And the fourth one would probably be using that mycos. 
Mycosis is so important, helps you get that mycorrhizal association. Well, not so important, but I think it helps also with the transplant shock. So a number of those things all added together, I think will give you bigger, better, healthier, more delicious tomatoes. That's today's video goers. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, share this one with your friends, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to check us out on Steemit. The food forest is looking epic. I can't wait to bring you guys along for the next update on that. And the new food forest, that's looking great too. The next installment, that should be really exciting. We're seeing good progression. So make sure to follow along. And again, hit the subscribe button if you haven't. Jay's Prigioni is out.